So you've come this far. I remember my first custom loop like it was yesterday. Whew, took some time. You know what, they get easier and they're so fun to build. And it doesn't matter if it's rigid or soft tubing, it's yours. You made it and you took the time to customize it the way that you wanted. But now you've got to fill it. A loop is nothing without its coolant and there's a certain finesse to properly filling and priming a loop. So. Let's get to it then. First, you'll want to ensure that your system is not powered on. This is crucial. You'll be checking for leaks throughout this process and you certainly don't want components running should one occur. Grab your coolant and fill bottle, maybe even a funnel for peace of mind if you have room in your case and begin filling the loop via the fill port or reservoir cap. When things are nearly topped off, set your fill tools aside and grab one of these. It's a 24 pin jumper. You'll get one included in your HydroX kit. In essence, these trick your power supply into thinking it's been turned on. You could use an external secondary power supply for this part. That's what I like to use just because I don't have to deal with all the cables already connected to the system. Or you could use the power supply already in here. Again, just make sure that the power is only connected to the Molex plug running to your pump. Once you've double checked, flip the power supply switch. Love that sound. You should hear the pump spool up and you should see fluid flowing through your loop. Check for any leaks at this point, but keep your hand on the power supply because you'll want to turn it off again before the coolant in your reservoir is totally drained. You don't want to run a pump on air. These pumps are lubricated and cooled by the fluid in the system. Make sure that, uh, yeah, you turn it off before that happens. Now grab your fill bottle and refill the loop from the same place you did earlier. Most of the time it'd be up top. As coolant is pushed by the pump into other parts of the system, we'll repeat this filling process until the reservoir is nearly topped off and no longer drains when the pump is turned on. So we filled it up again. Now we'll turn on the power supply, let fluid levels drop, kill the power, and repeat as many times as necessary while checking for leaks along the way. Eventually, the reservoir's fluid levels won't drop anymore like we said, because coolant will have already saturated the remainder of the loop. And from here, you can continue filling to within a centimeter or two of the top of the reservoir. From personal experience, I found that leaving the pump running for several minutes to hours with the fill port cap removed allows air bubbles trapped in the system, maybe in the radiator, maybe in the CPU block or the graphics card block to vent or bleed to atmosphere. This is especially important in high heat output scenarios because air has a terrible thermal conductivity of 0.024 watt per meter Kelvin, while water at room temperature at least is 0.6 watt per meter Kelvin. That's 24 times greater. Ergo, water is your friend, air is not. So ridding your closed system of air is necessary for the sakes of both efficiency and performance. Don't forget to resecure the fill cap, by the way, once you've finished. From there, carefully observe the loop for several hours, ensuring no leaks exist and that no tubing, if you're using rigid PETG or acrylic, is sagging as this could cause additional problems down the line. And for peace of mind's sake, while you're letting the system run for several hours, you may want to put a paper towel above the graphics card and above the power supply just in case you see a couple of drips and need to adjust things. When you're confident in the system's integrity, connect all vital components to power if you disconnected them earlier and officially fire up the PC for the first time. I highly recommend stress testing, by the way. Make sure your fan curves are calibrated appropriately and that your loop isn't getting too hot under load. This has caused many a leak in the past. Again, I speak from personal experience there. So uh, make sure that your fans aren't turned down too low. I mean, four or 500 RPM, that ain't gonna cut it even if you have a 360 mil rad and a semi-hot CPU under load. Now, a few extra tips. Coolant like this will need replacing every 12 months or so. If you wanna play it super safe, every six months is fine. Opaque and dyed coolants though, much more often. You'll see buildup in your blocks and radiators if left unchecked, and that is why Corsair recommends staying away from them for longer term peace of mind. And another thing, the amount of coolant you'll need for your loop entirely depends on its size, of course, but what I can say as a sort of gauge is that this system here needed less than a single liter of coolant, which is this size here, this is a thousand milliliters, one liter. And you'll find this to be the case for most single CPU GPU rigs with modest reservoirs like this one. To learn more about Corsair Hydrex water cooling gear, be sure to check out the links below where you can find all of it. We're talking fittings, water blocks, reservoirs, pumps, radiators, uh, even, even fill bottles. That's right, you can get your very own Corsair fill bottle. Pretty much everything you'll need to build your first custom loop all via the link below. That's all for this one, my name's Greg. Thanks for learning with me.